So uh, the organizers asked me to talk about fine-grained hardness in cryptography. <laughs> we did. <laughs> and uh, naturally, I said, naturally, I said, uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> We barely understand coarse-grained hardness uh, in cryptography and anywhere else. But uh, unlike Avi, uh, I like to do what uh, the organizers <laughs> is asking me. Uh, so I said, OK, give me your shortest slot, and I'll tell you everything I know about. Uh, <laughs> um, OK, so I'm going to talk about two uh, research directions that are widely open, I think are very interesting. They're open for more than 20 years. It's, there's been a little bit of work on them in the last 20 years, but not as much as they deserve. So to begin with, I'll talk about uh, the notion of proof of work, uh, which will talk about moderately hard puzzles. And then I'll talk about uh, <coughs> how hardness is born, how hardness can be created, uh, how can it gradually increase? And I guess that was the reason for my other title. It's getting harder all the time. Okay. So, uh, crypto, we have Alice and Bob. Alice has a, a randomness on her side and a security parameter, K. And the kind of puzzles we're used to talk about in crypto are very hard puzzles. So, Alice can create a puzzle, send it to Bob, and the creation of the puzzle is very easy. It can be linear in, in the security parameter, linear in K, and verifying a solution to a puzzle can also be very efficient, but solving the puzzle should be infeasible. It should be extremely hard. You can't do it by, in any polynomial time, and, and many times we would ask for it to be much harder, sub-exponentially hard, exponentially hard, and so on. Um, and these kind of puzzles are also known as uh, one-way functions. And uh, there is an, a beautiful theory around them. So this is the, the coarse-grained uh, hardness. We talk about now moderately hard puzzles. And we talk about it through this work on uh, spam fighting uh, by Dwork and Aor. And uh, they suggested the following um, solution to, to spam fighting. So let's say Bob wants to send an email to Alice. Uh, the problem is that sending an email is so uh, cheap that Bob can very well be a spammer and very cheaply send a lot of, of emails around and, and spam everybody. So instead, what Alice would ask Bob to do is to say, OK, send me the email, but only after you solve this puzzle that I created for you. So now to send the email, Bob will first need to solve the puzzle. And then if the puzzle, the solution verifies, then Alice will be ready to read the email. So. Solving this puzzle can no longer be infeasible because we do want to allow email communication to go through, but it should be moderately hard. Um, so it should be hard enough so spammers would really be hit uh, by computing, uh, by having uh, a lot of computation, but regular communication shouldn't be uh, disturbed by much. So we need very good bounds. We really need to understand how hard it is. Exactly how hard, because we need both the lower bound and the upper bound on the hardness of this puzzle. <coughs> and in addition, we shouldn't be able to, uh, to amortize the computation. Because if Bob is a spammer, he doesn't care about solving one puzzle. He needs to solve a lot of puzzles. And we want to make sure that solving a lot of puzzles is, is still very hard. So there are various natural candidates for this. And, uh, and in fact, this can be also non-interactive. So we don't need this kind of uh, uh, pattern of communication. So spam filters actually have improved a lot since this uh, very, very 
early work on spams, so perhaps we don't care about it anymore. But there are other, uh, other applications, uh, denial of service, time commitments. It's, it's a ba very basic uh, aspect of, of all these uh, di digital coins. In a sense, what you're having is something, your coin is something that's hard to compute, that requires some work to compute. That's the worth of the coin. And there are very interesting questions. So Dwork and Oro already asked this question. Can all of these puzzles be part of something we really care about? Why waste all of this computation effort uh, on, on things that we don't care about? And this perhaps is an, an analogy to something that was done much later in the, in the context of uh, verifying uh, that, that a, a human is, is uh, interacting with a computer. So this reCAPTCHA is actually using a lot of these inter small interactions to solve things that we really care about, like digitizing books. But the main question which I, I, I'm raising here, and they raised 20 some years ago, is is there a rich theory to uncover? Somehow in a, similar to the rich theory that we have when we start with hard puzzles. So on these hard puzzles, we can build a lot of other things. Can we connect different things that are just moderately hard and still useful in cryptography? So that's the one uh, uh, question that I wanted to raise. Uh, for the other, uh, let's talk about this beautiful theory that's built over one-way functions. So in cryptography, we're many times we start with this building block, for example, let's say one-way functions. And from these building bo blocks, we construct uh, something else, something very beautiful, perhaps some beautiful protocol that solves a difficult problem. And these constructions come with a reduction that proves that if this is secure, then what we constructed is secure. And this security comes with a parameter, let's say R. So your R secure if in time R, you cannot solve it better than with probability one over R, or whatever it is. But the main thing about all of these security reductions uh, is that they always decrease the hardness. So R prime is always smaller than R. And that's why I call it hardness reductions. It's not only that the secure <laughs> you reduce the security, but you also <laughs> reduce the hardness. And uh, and so let's take, for example, factoring, which could be an example for these uh, puzzles. So factoring is a problem that was born hard. Cryptographers did nothing to make factoring a hard problem. It was, it's immediately hard. And what cryptographers have been doing all along is make out of this hard thing other things that are a little bit less hard. So this is one way that we deal with, with hardness. But the other question that I wanted to raise is, uh, can hardness be constructed? Can it evolve? And that, uh, that connects um, to, uh, to a, a conjecture or even a thesis by uh, Charlie Rakoff that I'm going to describe in the next two slides. So, and, and this is in the context of block ciphers, so very briefly. Uh, uh, a block cipher gets a key, and given a plain text, you produce a cipher text. So this is a block cipher. For any fixed key, this function is actually a permutation, which is very useful if you want to go back from the cipher text to the plain text. And for a random key, this permutation looks random. It is indistinguishable from a random permutation. So these are block ciphers. Uh, and in reality, unlike this factoring that is immediately very hard, these kind of creatures are created by composing a lot of permutations that are very simple, relatively simple, and definitely very weak from a cryptographic point of view. So this is starting with AES, a a a sorry, with DES. And, and, uh, and, 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 and all the way to our days. So a very old uh, uh, conjecture or thesis by Charlie Rakoff is that 
If you take any sufficiently rich family of, of permutations, uh, F, uh, and, and essentially in uh, sufficiently rich, I think he mainly wanted it not to be completely linear. So if you compose a lot of linear permutations, you stay within linear permutations. So when I talked with him ages ago, it was about four permutations that he had in mind, and one of them was nonlinear, and this uh, made it uh, sufficiently rich. So the idea is that when you compose it, uh, you can create lots of interesting functions. So Gowers, independently but much later, I think, made basically the same conjecture. Well, it's more specific. So. Right, so you made a subset of this conjecture yes. for particular. So let, let's, yeah, let's. It will be here, so let's wait. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so if we take these simple uh, permutations and we compose polynomial n number of those, you will get a, blo a, a block cipher. You will get a pseudo-random permutation. So, no matter what family you have. As long as it's rich enough, whatever it means, you can get a, a pseudo-random permutation by composing many of those. So here, something very, very simple is going to be uh, to gradually become more and more complicated. And in the 20-some years uh, since, and perhaps he had this uh, conjecture many years before he talked with me, I, I assume, uh, there's been a little bit of progress. The progress was that this is a way, essentially, you can get similar things. Uh, uh, in a similar way, you can get k-wise independent permutations, not pseudo-random permutations, by k, but k-wise independent permutations. And, and the, sorry? Almost k-wise. Almost k-wise. So the, the, fami the simple family of permutations that they considered, so Gowers and, and later, uh, uh, the simple family was one where you look at, let's say, your input is n bit long, you select three bits, so this defines one of eight values, and you have uh, some, all the permutations on these eight values. So you only touch three bits and you permute the, val the value that you see in these three bits. So very simple, each one of them is very, very easy to break. But if you compose polynomial number of those, you get k-wise independence. In a sense, it's almost what we want, uh, but the order of quantifiers is different. Uh, while we want to compose polynomial number of, of permutations that will be secure against any other polynomial, which may be larger, here, uh, for any fixed polynomial number of queries, if we compose a larger polynomial, it will be secure. So it seems like we're close, but uh, probably not as close as we want. Uh, and, and there are lots of questions to be asked. What about pseudo-random permutations? Uh, is there a relation? Can we say that if one family is, if we have this conjecture for one family, does it imply the conjecture for another family? And uh, and in general, how hardness evolved in crypto is interesting. We do have hardness amplifications, but in, in a very different notion, uh, sense. Doesn't the work on card shuffling have some bearing on this? So there's a result of uh, Percy Diaconis that seven shuffles of a certain kind are enough to get a random. Right, so, so this is very re closely related to, to card shuffling. Yeah. Uh, in some of the card shuffling that they were considered, a lot of pieces are moving together. So even the, the simple permutation. So the question is, how simple is this uh, basic shuffle is? And this shuffle is extremely simple because uh, only eight cards are moving at a time. So, so the, the point is that you can't go by this kind of mixing process to actually converge to a uniform permutation. Right don't have enough information to describe a uniform permutation. Right. Right. So in a sense, this, so I said why this is a bit weaker than what we want, but it's also stronger. So it's incomparable because we're not shooting for being statistically close to uniform. We, we are shooting to be indistinguishable. So, so it's not about mixing, really. 
It's not about mix. It's a Markov chain, but it's not about mix. It's uh, it's mixing when you could, when you fix your when you fix your attention only on on these on on K cards, it will it will uh, their location will mix. So it, it, this is the, the sense of mixing. Is the K almost K as the only interesting test function, or do you really want like some other bigger? No, no, we do. I mean, I want any any polynomial time test, but this is the only thing that I'm aware that we know how to do. Um, here's another result. Uh, oh, so here is an, another final conjecture that's much more concrete uh, that, that was made in this paper. Uh, is it the case that the moment, so take any family any small family of permutations, the moment you compose enough of them to get four ways independence, is it the case that by now you also get pseudo-randomness? So this is an extremely concrete conjecture. I like the thesis that it's very, very difficult. Well, what kind of results can you go to prove with all these conjectures? You can't just prove them by the existence of one. Right, right. So uh, as we, <laughs> we can prove almost anything, <laughs> so we just reduce one thing to the other. So I gave these... So what would you use to, under what assumptions such a conjecture would be true? Uh, that's a great question. So that, I guess, because it's hard, uh, I mean, it explains why there's a little progress. But I think that actually some of the recent, I don't want to get into it, some of the recent work on, on uh, this small grain complexity may be a little bit encouraging in terms of the kind of assumptions. Uh, but I would start with this question about the relation between different families. Does one family, let's say if you're contained or, or containing, does it imply another family or, yeah, I don't know. If I had, um, I knew about it for a while and I didn't do anything. You can definitely try to refute them, right? I mean, this, the last conjecture seems very- Last conjecture, yeah. That's very natural, exactly. <laughs> 